Welcome to a Healing Peace Podcast. My name is Kimir Baker. I am the CEO and founder of J Intel, a nonprofit organization that bridges the gap between faith-based and therapeutic resources. Being an overcomer, visionary, and God's creation, I empower women with their emotional wellness and intimacy with God to live abundantly. In this podcast series, we reveal that our wellness is not just physical health, but includes mental and spiritual health. True health and well-being include all three aspects. We transform our lives when we care for our mind, body, and spirit. Welcome back. How have you been? We are coming to the end of an incredible hot summer. I don't know how it was for you, but where I live in Texas, it was sizzling. Now we're about to hit the fall season. Can you believe it? Man, this year is surely going by fast. Before I spend more time talking about the seasons, let's go into our wonderful PSAs. Why, yes, tell your family and friends about our podcast, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a review. These small acts have a huge impact. It helps us to reach more people with this incredible and uplifting message. Also, I am so grateful for our new subscribers. Yes, we are. We see you. Now, back to the show. I have a question. Has there been anything in your life where you stated that you will deal with it later? You may have thought that you had too much going on to deal with the certain situation, or maybe you forgot to complete a task. It may be waiting until the last minute to buy new shoes for your child, or you forget to pay a bill. Unfortunately, I've forgotten so many times about paying certain bills. Yes, I have. So much so that I had to start using that whole bill pay. Yes, go ahead and schedule. Helps me. Another situation for me is that I will wait to clean the kitchen. I know people say clean as you go. However, after a long day, the thought of rinsing off dishes and placing them in the dishwasher just seems like a daunting task. Recently, I was speaking to a friend about house cleaning, more specifically the dishes. We discussed our upbringing and the value our parents placed on keeping the dishes washed. Our parents did not tolerate having dirty dishes in the sink. As we talked, I admitted that I periodically keep dirty dishes in the sink due to being rebellious. I've been rebellious since childhood, you guys. Darn those dishes. I finally had the freedom. And I don't want to have to be forced to keep that kitchen clean. After I made my statements, my friend stated that came here. Not keeping the kitchen clean attracts all kinds of bugs and other creepy things like rats. I thought initially, well, apparently your upbringing has really paid off because you're still instilled with keeping that kitchen clean. But after pondering and making my excuses, my heart did sink a little bit. I thought, okay, I don't want bugs in the house. So I'm going to confess, I'm slowly changing my ways. I'm kicking that rebellion to the curb. Nonetheless, I know that we have had experiences where we lack the motivation to follow through or just complete them. But what happens when we avoid situations to our detriment? Want support and guidance on your personal growth and development? Then pick up our personal growth and development workbook, authored by a Christian counselor and our Jay and Tell founder, Kimir Baker. The workbook provides a practical approach for emotional wellness by providing insights and prompts for journaling as well as prayer. This approach reveals the power of self-reflection and self-discovery while mending emotional wounds with the help of our Father. Pick up your 10 weeks of daily encouragement and practice transformation. Go to ahealingpeace.com forward slash store to purchase your copy. 
I recently had an experience that forced me to deal with unresolved emotions and issues. In the past, I've talked about numerously how I can easily be a workaholic. A sister can get the job done. However, as I'm getting older, I'm realizing that I do not want to work my life away. Also, the Lord has tapped me numerously on the shoulder and said, Girl, you have a life to live. In living my life, I should not be at the mercy of getting the job done. God has been gracious in reiterating this fact to me. But for some odd reason, I just could not stop myself. As time progressed, I understood that I have a self-imposed urgency. My level of urgency becomes worse when dealing with authority figures. My brain responds on autopilot, and immediately I drop everything when someone of authority makes a request. Unfortunately, this way of thinking and behaving began to interrupt my life. I wanted to be free. Instead, I was trapped by work. No matter what I tried, I was unable to stop my madness. Thus, I told myself, girl, you need help. I required more support and tools to retrain my brain. So I went to a therapist. I needed to address the root cause of my self-imposed urgency. In my session, it was time for me to explore the initial experience of my emotional wound. I began to tense up. Initially, I was unaware of my body response. My therapist noticed the tension And she asked, uh, what are you thinking about? I expressed that I was bracing myself to relive the pain that I previously dismissed. Yes, like the dishes, I didn't want to clean. I had the same responses to my emotional pain that I endured. I'll deal with it later. I do not want to address it. I'm going to bury it. Because if I do not, it's going to hurt. My perception of reliving the pain hindered my mindset for healing. The overflow of my thoughts triggered a bodily response. Instead, I needed to change my thoughts to create a healing response. To do this, a sister needed help. Luckily, my therapist is great. And she knew immediately what needed to get done. She knew that I not only needed to shift my mindset, but have the tools to heal. She started this journey with me by having me to do breathing exercises so I can relax. Yes, it's the 478 rule, which is you inhale for four seconds, you hold it for seven seconds, and then you exhale. For eight seconds. I didn't do that correctly, but you get the gist. Four, seven, eight. After breathing, she shared that my pain is not bigger than God, but I have to be willing to give it to Him. I pondered over her statements. Did I really think God could not handle my pain? In hindsight, I didn't even consider giving my pain to God. I just wanted it to go away. I'm like, I'm st- I'm tired of hurting. I, it's getting on my nerves. It's interrupting my life. But in that mindset, I never really thought about, huh, God can handle this. Needless to say, we had to keep going because I was stumped. I, I was still kind of trapped in my thought process. And as we continued our session, she walked me through envisioning Jesus being in the room with me. As I walked through my painful memories, my first thought or reaction was to run away from the pain. I didn't want to go through it. And it was obvious because, again, my body tensed up. But my therapist persisted with placing Jesus in the room. She spoke about his presence 
as well as her presence. I once again thought about Jesus being near me. I envisioned him holding my hand and telling me that he will not let me run from my pain. As he held my hand, I turned to him and I cried on his shoulder. I cried not only imaginatively, but literally. I cried because of the pain and how it impacted my life. I cried with the desire to release the pain while knowing that Jesus stood beside me. I cried because I just needed to cry. Once I finished crying, my therapist asked, what was different about our session? She noticed the difference in my physical being. I no longer was tensed and hunched over. I was no longer plagued with this perplexed look as I was pondering over everything, trying to figure out, trying to come up with my own conclusions. I didn't have all of that in my physical being. And apparently, I was not aware that my physical appearance changed. Until she asked me what was different. I will admit, I did feel a thousand pounds lighter. Yes, I did. But I had to answer her question. She was looking. She was waiting. So I thought and I pondered. And I responded that the difference was that she placed Jesus in the room. For the first time, I allowed myself to cry with him in the moment. Usually, I may tear up after my attempts to solve the problem fail. This was the first time that I acknowledged Jesus holding my hand, guiding me through my healing process. This was the first time that I allowed him to give me the courage to address my issues. Are you ready for an interactive way to inspire, empower, and equip your community? As society returns to normal, we face the challenge of connecting and purposeful living. Our 501c3 nonprofit organization, J Intel, understands this challenge. We have developed workshops that promote self care and well being. Invite J Intel to your women's events, such as retreats, luncheons, small group gatherings, and internal programs. Together, we will create an atmosphere for self expression, self discovery, confidence building, and spiritual connection. Go to jintel.org slash booking to book us today. Our session moved on. It drew me closer to the only one who can understand my pain and actually has the power to do something about it. As I share my story, it reminds me of a story in the Bible. Yeah, probably I thought I wasn't going to get to that good old Bible. Yes, you did. But here we are. We about to go on and do it. A while ago, I, I did a podcast and I referred to John 11 when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. I talked about him being vulnerable, how he wept. And in his tears, he had compassion and performed a miracle. And that miracle, of course, was that he raised Lazarus from the dead. Now, I would like to add a little bit more to this story because you know how sometimes you read the Bible and and in that moment you get one thing and then you come back a month later, you get something totally different. Well, I had that experience. Yes, I did. So I came back to John 11 and in John 11, before the miracle, Lazarus' sisters, Martha and Mary, approached Jesus. Martha approaches Jesus first in John eleven twenty one to 22. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Then in John eleven thirty two, Mary comes to the scene. Now, when Mary came to Jesus, and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. Both sisters stated the same thing. Lord, 
if you were here. However, Jesus responded differently to them. When Jesus responded to Martha, he challenged her faith. Do you believe that your brother will rise again? Do you believe that those who live and believe in me will not die? However, when he spoke to Mary, he was gentle and moved by her. For the longest time, I could not understand what in the world, the same statement, but two different responses. Then finally, it hit me like a lug. I felt so smart when it hit me. Martha's response appeared to be a bit religious. Let me respond in faith, like I'm not hurting right now. I must pull myself together and remember who is Jesus. Remember, she stated, I know whatever you ask from God, God will give you. She is rationalizing her experiences. Rather, Mary immediately went to Jesus in humility, positioning herself at his feet, knowing that she needs his help. In her plea to Jesus, she allowed herself to be vulnerable as well. The scripture states in verse 33, when Jesus saw her weeping. You see, Mary fell at his feet, stated the obvious, and then wept. In her tears and the tears of others, Jesus moved into action. He proceeded to call on God and did a miracle by raising Lazarus from the dead. Two sisters, two different responses. One response, more diplomatic unwilling to expose the pain and cry out to Jesus. The second sister is humble, vulnerable, and willing to weep at Jesus' feet. She knew that she had a problem and only Jesus could fix it. In their tears, it moved Jesus to action. He connected with the people and wept as well. Do you understand? That Jesus cries with you in your pain. Do you understand that our tears move Jesus into action? What does this mean to have a healing mindset or a mindset to heal? I believe a healing mindset is similar to the 12 steps of AA. And that is Alcohol Anonymous. The 12 steps guide people to understanding that they have a problem and only a power greater than themselves can restore them. The steps request that people return to God, humbly admit their wrongdoing, make amends with others, and continually draw closer to God. What I shared, of course, is abbreviation of the steps. However, the steps reveal humility vulnerability, reliance upon God, and personal responsibility. Participating or completing these actions lead us toward healing. It shifts from overlooking our pain to courageously exposing it while getting the help that we need. Healing begins when we change our mindset about the pain. Healing begins when we go to a power greater than ourselves. The outcome of possessing a healing mindset leads to freedom as we release our pain. And as I share my experiences with my therapist and just trying to get to the root of my emotional wound, but in that journey, at the end of it, It provided the freedom to be released from the pain, release of the things that I buried, release of the things that I overlooked and said, I will deal with it later. And now it came full surface because it still overflowed and impacted my life. So again, a healing mindset begins with changing how we view our pain instead of something to be ashamed of and 
buried and I don't want to look at it. It's more of, okay, let me bring it to the cross. Let me bring it to God and allow him to shift my experiences while releasing and filling me with something so much more powerful than what I thought I could have. Why? Because God wants us to live an incredible, full, free life. Okay, now, because I'm going to get carried away and keep on talking. But what I want you to do, yes, I do. I got some homework for you. And it's simply come back next week. I have a friend joining the show and we are going to dig deeper into our subconscious, talking about that mindset, talking about dealing with our emotional pain, releasing those limiting beliefs, and shucks, living life to the full. You don't want to miss it. See you next time.